Hello YouTube fam, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Tina and I make videos on lifestyle, home, and DIY projects every single week. I thought it'd be fun to do some air dry clay DIYs for today's video because you guys are loving those and I also really love them. I love that a lot of you guys actually said that it brings you back to elementary school days. I definitely loved working with clay as a child just because you got to get your hands messy and just create something new. And I don't know about you guys, but I still have some of my projects from elementary school. My parents have kept them. If I can find a photo, I will put it right here but of course that was working with ceramic clay so working with air dry clay is a little bit different so I want to give you guys some of my best tips and tricks as well so that your projects will last and I'm also really excited for today's video because it's sponsored by every plate and if you guys have been here for a while you know that I love every plate I'll show a little bit more about them as well as a special offer later on in this video and if you haven't already don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel because I would love to have you guys here and also please leave me a comment of what you guys would like to see more of on this channel I definitely have a lot of DIY and home stuff coming but you guys always have great ideas and I love hearing them so feel free to share them down below all right and with that let's go ahead and jump into the first project hello from voiceover Tina for each one of these projects, I'm using the Crayola air dry clay and this big tub has seriously lasted me quite a while and I would totally recommend it to you guys I'm also laying out some parchment paper and I find that it helps the clay not stick too much onto your work area which is always an issue when you're working on your tabletop so using something like parchment paper is really going to help. And of course I have a little container of slip. I've actually had this sitting here for quite some time so it's dried out a bit. I basically take any dried pieces of clay that I don't use and I put it in here and add some water and you can really make this last by continually adding in more water and clay as you need it. So the first thing I'm doing with my clay is rolling it out and I'm going to make this an even slab by placing popsicle sticks on each side. I stack three of them on top of each other and tape them together and this is going to help us create an even thickness throughout the slab. So once that's all rolled out, I'm going to go ahead and imprint a circle with any small object. Then I'm making a mark above the center of the circle and I'm going to use that to create two lines to touch the edges of the circle. The best way to describe this is to create a teardrop shape, but to me, it kind of looks like an upside down ice cream cone. And with that, I'm using my X-Acto knife to cut it all out. So essentially we're going to have these two pieces and I'm going to connect them by scoring the two edges where they meet and I'm just using my slip to blend those together. Now it's all a matter of finessing it so that the bottom circular piece becomes a cup shape. So I'm using my fingers to mold it as best as I can. I'm also cutting out some small V shapes into the circular part so this becomes more of that cup shape. And you'll see that I'm cutting out these sections on the side as well as the top of the circle and then I'm going to close them by scoring and slipping it back together. And by doing this it's going to give us more of a folded shape to create our holder. And then once I was happy with the overall shape, I'm just going to use my slip to smooth everything out. As a last step, I'm poking a hole at the top and in the end, it kind of reminds me of a soup spoon that I would usually use to eat pho with. Now that we have one done, I'm going to go ahead and repeat the process to create two more of them. And when creating these, they definitely do not need to be identical. I think that the subtle differences between each one is really going to make it look more unique and special. I also wanted to take this time to address some questions that I had about waterproofing your air dry clay. From my understanding, you can't really waterproof air dry clay, but you can always make it water resistant. So that is why I'm choosing to use air plants for this project so it doesn't get soaking wet. But if you guys have any tips to make air dry clay more waterproof, definitely let me know in the comments below. All right, so once these are all done, I'm gonna go ahead and let them sit overnight to dry. All right, so at this point you can leave them as is or you can paint them. So of course I wanted to add a little bit of color to them. I wanted to create an ombre effect with all three of them. So I'm painting it three different colors from lightest to darkest. And of course I'm going to paint this with my favorite boho warm color palette. But let me know in the comments what you guys would paint this if you were to recreate this project. I ended up giving them two coats for each one of these and then you can also add on a fun design afterwards or go ahead and do whatever you'd like but I'm gonna go ahead and keep these simple by adding in some speckling to give it a ceramic look. To 
protect our piece, I use a glossy glaze from Sculpey, and I like this as a top coat because it gives it a little bit of shine. So after everything is completely dry, you can go ahead and put it all together. You can really use whatever cording you'd like for this part, but I'm going to string them together with some raffia for a natural look. To keep them spaced out, you basically just need to knot it for however far apart you want each one of the holders to be and just string on each one. I also went ahead and added a ring to the top for a more finished look and we can go ahead and hang this up and add our plants to it. These little air plant holders are seriously so adorable and you can just make one of them or string them together like I did. Or you can even make these go vertically across like a banner. I think that would look amazing. I absolutely love how this project came out and it's such a fun way to display your air plants and you can totally make them as large or as small as you need them to be. Before moving on to the next project, I wanted to talk about today's video sponsor, Every Plate. I'm in the mood for some Asian food tonight, so we're gonna make sriracha pork stir fry. This seriously looks so good, and I'm excited to try out this recipe. I actually have been cooking a lot at home recently, and it just makes me so happy whenever I get to try out a fun new recipe. And what I really love about Every Plate is that it does not take a lot of time to cook. It only takes me about 30 minutes to make all these meals, and I've learned so many new ways to cook my food from the recipes, which is something that I really enjoy. This year, I've been inspired just to take the time to fuel my body with home cooked meals. So I genuinely get so excited when my every plate box comes in. All the recipes I've tried from every plate have been so easy to follow and they literally give you all the ingredients that you need. Since it's just Brian and I in our household, I find that we will overbuy things that usually come in larger quantities and they will expire or go bad quickly. So this is great because it saves food from going to waste. And not to mention, every plate is pledging to offset 100% of their carbon emissions, which is so awesome. Every plate dinners are the cheaper, healthier alternative to takeout or delivery, and they offer over 10 chef designed recipes each week from only $4.99 per serving, which is basically the same price as a cup of coffee, so this is a great affordable choice if you're looking for new meal options to try out. If you haven't tried out Every Plate yet, they're actually giving you guys three weeks of meals for only $1.99 a serving, and you'll get an additional 20% off another two weeks, which is amazing. So be sure to use my link down below as well as my special discount code to save you some dollars. And with that, we can go ahead and move on to the next project. For this next project, I'm grabbing a chunk of my clay and I'm going to roll that out into a slab with a thickness of three popsicle sticks. And I actually had these cardboard pieces that I cut out for a previous project and I'm going to use that as a guide to cut out my circles. So for my piece, I'm using one big one for the center and then three circles that gradually get smaller. And in total, we'll have seven circles for our moon phases. So I'm taking the four circle templates and I'm tracing them right onto the clay and cutting them all out. Luckily, the slab of clay fit them perfectly. And again, I'm just gonna use my X-Acto knife for all of these cuts. So I'm going to go ahead and set those aside and roll out another clay to cut out the remaining three circles. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and let them sit for a little bit and come back to them to smooth them all out with my slip. This step is super important and I'm just going to smooth out the edges as well as the flat surface of each circle. After that, you can go ahead and add in holes to the moon if you plan on stringing them together with chains, but for mine, I'm just going to use some string, so I'm skipping that step. Alright, so I'm letting that sit overnight to dry and then came back to them the next day to work on them. So here's what the layout of the circles looks like, so we're going to have the big one in the center and then the smaller ones on the side. Then I'm taking the same circle templates that I used before and I'm going to use that as a guide to create my moon phases and trace it on with a pencil. The center one is actually going to be white, so we don't need to worry about that, but the rest of them are going to vary in crescent and half moon phases. And if you wanted to do more phases, you can definitely add in a lot more circles to create a longer banner. So now it's time to paint, and I wanted these to be a very light clay color, so I mixed up a dusty pink with raw sienna, and then I also added in a bit of red to give it a more pink tint. I really love this color and I'm gonna go ahead and just paint that into the negative space of each circle and also paint the edges as well. I found that one coat actually covered it pretty nicely, but I added in two coats just in case. So 
So for the actual moon shapes, I first used a white acrylic paint, but I thought that looked way too stark. So then I added in a little bit of this camel color and it really softened the color to create a warm off-white paint. And I'm not actually sure if you guys can tell on camera, but this really did make a world of a difference to warm up the piece. So now you can leave this as is for a very minimal look, but I'm gonna go ahead and add in tiny little speckles. And if you guys can't tell by now, I definitely have a thing for speckles. And for an extra celestial touch, I'm gonna go ahead and use my tiny brush to add in little stars. And I think this adds in a lot of interest to the negative space. And lastly, we're gonna go ahead and add a piece of twine to the back and just glue it to the backside of each of the moons to put it all together. And as I'm doing this, I'm making sure that the white face is actually facing the center while the clay color is facing outwards. You can hang this piece vertically or horizontally and I think it adds in so much interest to a gallery wall or just a plain white wall. I love that this is a very neutral take on lunar decorations that you might normally see, but of course you could change this up to any colors to suit your personal style. This DIY was super fun and simple to create and I think it just came out so cute. I hope you guys like those projects and if you have a favorite or are planning to do one of them, definitely let me know in the comments down below. I would love to hear your thoughts. I love making air dry clay videos, so if you guys would like to see more, make sure that you like it so that I know. And I want to thank every plate for sponsoring today's video. If you guys are interested in checking them out, make sure that you click on my link down below. If you guys are inspired to recreate any of the projects from today's video, make sure that you tag me on Instagram so that I see them. And I also post on there every day, so make sure that you give me a follow over there as well. And of course, I had to put some of your recreations on the screen here. You guys are seriously so amazing. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay inspired and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!